This is the most disturbing Sasquatch encounter I've ever heard. I almost didn't make this video, but this guy wants his encounter shared, and that's what I do. So anyways, keeping that in mind, this encounter may not be suitable for all audiences. My name's Daryl, and I'll be the first to say I ain't right in the head. Neither was my family to put things frank. My parents grew up in the Great Depression, and what they went through shaped their way of thinking. They passed that down to me, and well, here I am. One thing about them, they would never waste a thing, I mean anything. Found a bag on the road, some trash, they'd pull off and make use of it somehow. Someone throw something out at the dump, they'd dust it off and sell it for a nickel. Found some roadkill on the side of the road, that was supper. Horse died, we ate it. Dog died, we ate it. Mouse caught in the mouse trap, we ate it. I told you they didn't waste a damn thing and I mean it. There was no limits on what they do to avoid waste. Some people might think they were insane and I'd agree with them, but sometimes life forces you to adapt. I don't feel anything as I write this to you, Smokey. I must be pretty fucked up in the head, man. But something happened when I was a boy that still gets to me when I really sit and think about it for a while. I'm writing this to you because no one else listens, and maybe some people who watch your channel would learn something from it. It was hunting season in the small West Virginia town where I grew up, and my pa was out deer hunting. We already had two freezers full of meat from last season, but that didn't stop him. Nowadays you'd say he was a prepper. Back then, that was just how we lived. Anyway, one day he left before the sun came up, and didn't come back till after dark. My ma was getting concerned because he was always back before dark. Well eventually, he pulled up the driveway at around 9pm. He walked past both of us without saying nothing and went to get his bone saw and butcher knife with some toe straps in the other hand. He had a dead look in his eyes and I couldn't help notice there was a stench coming from him. He calls me and my brother over, get over here help me with this. And we went over to the truck. The stench got worse the closer we got to the truck. I looked in the bed of the truck and all I could see was a huge hairy mess of orangish brown fur and blood. Pa was rigging the toe straps up to the thing, and he hands me and my brother two ends and says, don't look at it, just pull like hell. So the three of us used all our strength to pull that thing, and hell, I wasn't even sure how he got it up there by himself in the first place, it must have been over 500 pounds. I still didn't know what the hell it was, and I wasn't about to ask him. We dragged the body 50 feet over to the butcher shed where he'd always dressed the deer. There was a dim fluorescent light in there with just enough light to see I wasn't looking at a deer. Or a bear, coyote, or anything I'd seen before. It looked like a freaking orangutan at first. He told us to go inside, and we went in. But we watched him go in and out of the shed several times from the window. First time he went out to grab an axe from the main shed. Then he goes in again, then he goes out and grabs a sledgehammer, and goes back in, until he finally went out to get the damn chainsaw, and that was the last we saw of him for a while. We had no idea what he was doing with the unknown animal, but we did hear the chainsaw going occasionally. At around 10pm I hadn't ate nothing for dinner and I was ready to eat just about anything. He calls us out and tells us to bring some plastic bags to package and freeze some of it. So we go out and he hands me a goddamn gorilla looking foot and tells me to package it. At that point I had to ask him what he shot. All he said was, I'll tell you after supper. I felt a little bit sick but I had already eaten some weird stuff in my life and one thing they taught me was not to complain. Shut up and eat it. That's what they always said, shut up and eat it. So I learned to adapt and not say much. He had the rest of the animals shoved in a large burlap sack. The pelt was already cleaned off. It was a dense orange-brown fur, almost like the shag carpet in our living room, but a different color. After packing up the odd bits, it was time to bring the rest of it inside. Ma was already on the job making some stuffing. She had retro classics playing on the old gramophone and had the table all set with candles because all the lights in the dining room were shot. Pa laid the thing out on the table and cut away the burlap sack. I almost passed out when I saw it, all skinned and gutted. It looked like one of those jacked, hairless chimps. Strong arm and leg muscles. It made sense why he needed the chainsaw to cut off the extremities. 
The head was still on it, but I never did get a good look at its face because Pa kept a smaller sack over its head so we couldn't see it and get grossed out. Ma put the stuffing in and the room was dead silent while we watched her. She opened the oven and it wouldn't fit even with half the legs and arms cut off already. So Pa grumbled to himself, took it out, went outside with the chainsaw and cut the head off. He went down to the freezer to store that too. It barely fit diagonally in the oven and the door was open a little bit. It cooked at 375 for about two and a half hours and by the time it was out it was about midnight. We weren't sure if it was done, but we were all starving, so my pa carved it and gave us each a slab. Pa took the first bite. He didn't say anything as he chewed it and washed it down with some tap water. I took the next bite and figured it couldn't be so bad. I was wrong. It was gamey and dense, tasted like shit and tough to chew. Might not have been cooked fully either. Finally, my brother broke the silence and said, tastes like shit. Pa slammed his fist on the table and said, I worked hard for this meal, and, and this is the respect I get? We didn't say anything the whole meal after that. I asked him after what it was. He frankly told me it was a Bigfoot, and he almost shed a tear talking about it. This was a god-awful accident, he told me, but when I saw it lying there, I, I couldn't waste it. I had to bring it back. You are never supposed to shoot one of these things. It was dark, and I thought it was a deer. I was desperate to bring back a meal because I hadn't got anything all day out there. Our house was regularly attacked with rocks almost every night for a month after this happened. Somehow the Sasquatches must have tracked us down after he shot their kin, and I don't blame them for being pissed off. Based on the size, I'm assuming it was just a juvenile, about maybe 7 feet tall. If I had known more about the intelligence of Sasquatch, I never would have ate it. But I was raised to not waste and to not ask questions. I ask more questions now, and I have learned a lot from the encounters you share on your channel. My father passed away the year after all that. I'm not sure if it was related, but I tell you, he was never the same. When he died, my ma started splurging with all the family inheritance, and we moved to a nicer place and didn't live like that anymore. But I still try not to waste anything. My pa was a good man with a good heart. But that man was not right in the head. Thank you for reading this, Smokey. Daryl. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that one, Daryl. I've never heard anything like that before. I appreciate you for sending that in, and I hope nobody else finds themselves partaking in, um, <coughs> yeah. Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. We appreciate everything you do. Sometimes there is a dark side to Sasquatch encounters, and I'll keep sharing the good ones and the bad ones. Be sure to subscribe for more Sasquatch updates, and we'll see you in the next episode.